Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco. Google Next 23, this is theCUBE's team coverage. I'm your host, John Furrier, with my two analysts, co-hosts here, Rob Streche, heading up the Cube Collective Research, and Dustin Kirkland, CUBE analyst contributor. Um, Lisa Martin is here as well, and we've got the team, Rob Hove, Mark Albus, and the entire SiliconANGLE team on the floor, getting the stories. No stories too small for theCUBE, we're going to break it down. Here is the keynote analysis, day two segment, and also, we're also going to analyze, zoom out, and look at the big picture relative to the cloud industry, and some of the technologies that are folding into place Place for each of the hyperscalers, AWS, Azure, and Google. Um, Google's doing great, we're day two. A lot of enthusiasm, Rob and Dustin. I got to say, I'm enthused, um, I'm, I'm converted over to Google Cloud <laughs> in terms of the, my appreciation for their momentum. Um, you know, when I see winning hands, I like to, like to look at it and stare at the cards and go, you know, they're, they're doing a good job, and I like how they're playing their cards with the cloud. I think they're smart. Um, they got a lot more work to do. They're clearly number three in the marketplace, but they are hitting all the right notes, in my opinion. Um, what's your take on the keynote analysis? This is about developers. Um, uh, it was an interesting keynote. Um, they had, in Google Flare, you never see Amazon do this, by the way. They, they do walkout songs, but you never see Amazon do a musical, Rob. Uh, uh, live performance. <laughs> live On performance. stage, three live singers, there was a piano, there was a sousaphone. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was the real deal. There was yeah. a tuba, chief tuba player. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, exactly. I've never seen a chief tuba officer or a chief tuba <laughs> player or whatever it was, but yeah I, I, yeah, I thought it was interesting that they were leaning into the legacy, you know, legacy is bad kind of thing. I, I mean, I don't know how that's going to play over with the people in the audience. I, with the developers, it definitely yeah. plays well. Yeah, yeah. But when you start to look at it and go, having been in the insurance industry and I had something that was running on NT4 and we had no idea who had actually built the app, and you had to yeah. kind of still, we called those heritage apps, not legacy apps. Yep. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Well, how let's, let's let's explain what happened first. First, they yeah. opened the keynote with a musical live performance of, of artists, of Googlers. I think they were they were Googlers, I believe. Yeah, all and of so, them. Yeah, uh, our former classic Googlers. Google. <laughs> a lot of color, um, and I love that in, in there. A color commentary, a lot of fla flair. A musical called "Living in Legacy Land," where they, there was a singing and dancing around legacy yeah. infrastructure, clever script, and then they um, weaved in the, the demos, but they also weaved in the uh, the lore stories, yeah. the lore of Google, kind of showing that they have chops. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, legacy, they're flexing their muscle, living in legacy land. Again, that was the focus of the, of the, of the entire keynote, how to manage legacy environments. And the pivot was, build your legacy. Yeah. So, interesting theme. I, I kind of liked the positioning. I, didn't, I thought the musical was kind of cringeworthy, but okay, that's me. That's me. Um, but I did like Well, look, the Legacy is, is very relatable, and I think that was what's pretty incredible. Yeah. Yesterday was all about here's what's next, here's what's in beta, here's what's just hit GA. Look, if you're a, a developer and have access to uh, write something new from scratch, that's, it's quite a blessing. Yeah. It's yeah. quite freeing to start something from scratch. Uh, the truth is, though, that in the enterprise, most, most developers aren't tasked with, here's a blank slate, product manager, development team, go build something new. Most developers are tasked with, there's something out there running, go make, make it better, and you're going to inherit something, uh, you're going to maintain something, you're maybe going to migrate something. So there was something very relatable about this, uh, today's keynote. Yeah, and I think theme. it was relevant, and what they didn't really tie, at least in my mind, effectively to, was the DevOps movement. They did bring SREs up on stage with yeah. the champions, there were SREs, they call them champion innovators. It wasn't clear if they were Google employees or part of the community, like VMware has V-experts, so, so it clearly have the stakeholders. But I liked how um, the DevOps angle is tied in there because if you think about DevOps, IT, remember the old stat, Rob? You know, seventy percent of the dollars go to running, uh, running the business, you know, versus yeah. investing in. So operating IT used to be kind of a sunk cost. DevOps are essentially running things. Well, so yeah, I, you know. I think they got into it when they started doing the demo of Cloud Run and Cloud Deploy, and they got into the Dora metrics a little bit. And I, to your point, I think they could have gone deeper on that stuff. But I, I thought. Again, to Dustin's point, you're not going to really have those opportunities to build net new apps that often. Yeah. It, it, a when lot you can, of times it's great, but it's, you know. it's refactoring or maybe a piece of the app is yeah. being rebuilt. So I, I think that the demos 
although they talked about legacy yep. and converting legacy, yep. didn't really show converting. They showed building new. Yep. And yep. I, I think that was a miss, but I, I thought it was, I mean, the demos were good. The app yeah. sheet re resonated with me yeah. Um, yeah. of all the things there, because I think there's instances where you need to put a front end on something that you have plumbing for. So if you have APIs, and it made me start to think about like, did I architect that right? Um, am I set up for that? So the, it, it kind of, there's an underlying question that you're asked, like, can I even do that? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, okay, where's my oh, incident reports? Okay, they have the access to data. So yeah. do I have that API pipe? Yep. Yeah. But it Web made, hooks it are they in place? How many times I went and built macros in Excel yep. to go and do something, and this would have been so much easier. Well, this, this is a place where I think Google can really dominate the low code, no code, you know, minimal code. One of the one of the cloud champions that was on stage, she introduced herself as a teacher. I got the impression she's yeah. not a Googler. She's you know, sort of volunteer yeah. in a community, yeah. a, a power user. Um, but she brought a, a, a hell of a lot of expertise. Uh, about a particular problem, and then was able to draft an application uh, with a handful of you know narrative voice prompts. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was scripted, uh, of course, but you know it's got the wheels turning. That like this low code, no code environment, uh, Google has built a ton of brilliant infrastructure around. Yeah, I mean, I thought the first day two keynote. I, was, I didn't really give it high marks, at least from a um, content perspective. I did like how they put that theme out there, legacy, I did like that. I think that's important, I think you had a good point that there's, there's a lot of things that need to get fixed that people are working on. And that begs the question to our question yesterday. Are, was that a developer conversation or was that more of a DevOps, DevOps. conversation? A bit, I mean, there, there was, was some the SRE course. in there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, John mentioned the, the lore. Uh, of course, Google, like any company, has uh, you know, legends and lore and uh, or horror stories. Uh, and we were treated to a couple of those from, from Google. Yeah. One in particular, uh, the, one of the uh, SREs responsible for uh, helping identify and patch the log4j vulnerability yeah, yeah. back from December 2021. <laughs> uh, she gave a, you know, a pretty detailed play-by-play. -play, you raise uh, your hands that you remember where you were at I that moment. I remember the very moment yeah. and exactly where I was, yeah. <laughs> log4j for day, for sure. Yeah. No, I, and I think also in the lore where they talked about the ARP storm and how that really caused them to go out and build their own load balancing, I, I think it became a very interesting, I thought there was a dichotomy there about, hey, we, we couldn't get the, the vendor to be named later uh, to go and <laughs> fix their load balancers, yep. so we went out and built one in software. I think they're, you know, hitting on. That's a very Google response, though, it is. by the way. I mean, there are a few companies in the world can say, you know, this cornerstone of technology is broken, so let's just rebuild it from, from scratch. But, but what they went into, and I, I kind of wrote it down, into kind of how to develop faster, right? And they kind of had that theme for developers around pluggability, open source and APIs, and reuse of extensible, extensibility layers. I thought, to me, that, that was them going back to their roots. And I, you would know from being here, I mean, that to me was like motherhood and apple pie for Google, yeah. reaching out to the developers and saying, and also to other people, bringing them in and saying, hey, the AI is going to help you do yeah. these three layers yeah. and keep up with that. I yeah. mean, again, they got into a lot of the security stuff, which I thought was interesting. Uh, to your point, I thought, you know, it was- See, As ex-Googler, what did you think of the keynote? Um, so, I mean, I've, I've been on that stage or stages like that. I know what goes into the preparation. Um, a lot of efforts put into selecting good speakers, internal, external. Uh, the rehearsals go on for weeks. There are people here that haven't slept, you know, for the last few nights. I, I, I saw one former colleague uh, nodding off because I'm, I'm sure she's been working around the <laughs> clock uh, on this. So a lot of work goes in. Yeah. There's a lot of prep. It's polished. It's live. Uh, yeah. You know that that's also you know kind of a key differentiator. Yes. Stuff goes wrong. Um, in general, you know, I thought that the topic was relatable. I for you know it was a little cheesy, but I enjoyed yeah, the yeah. effort that went into the musical yeah, yeah. performance. Yeah. Um, I wasn't. I'm not too hardcore on it, but no, you know, I want to see more meat in the bone. I was hoping uh, that I'd see much more stronger developer posture. Like, look at here's some bang bang up new code. Here's some AI. Yeah. Go. It, you know, there was a stretch with app, well, I, app, uh, app, the app thing to say that's AI. I mean, I guess it's AI, but, well, I think you know, it's like chatbot, basically. But they went and tied it into Vertex and how they were yeah. able to do yep. the image recognition and build the app that could, you know, go and say, hey, what, you yeah. know, describe what's here. I think yep. that's a 
small chatbot like yeah. use of it, but it was interesting how they showed you that there was different things under the hood happening even though it looked like it was all in the same interface. I, I thought to me, that's yeah. how you build a solution. And I thought that's I mean, one to of me, Google's I, strengths. I think I, my big takeaway was that that made me think, are you set up to do those things? Because I think they're showing a use case of yeah. dynamic building stuff, right? And I think the question is, are your data sets available? What's your architecture look like? And then this comes back down to the whole cloud versus you know, selection. I mean, we were talking with John uh, Truro from Ventrilli yesterday, and we, we had this discussion around, do you pick your platform? Like, like, are we getting at the point where it's like, Google does this, AWS does that, yep. Microsoft does that, because at some point, when did you, they cross over and being an island? Mm. I mean, there's no multi-cloud talk here, you know why? Because it's Google Cloud, they don't want you to talk about multi-cloud. Because they don't, I mean, we talked about Red Hat, but I mean, for the most part, Amazon's not going to talk, talk about multi-cloud no. at reInvent, and certainly Azure, I mean, they're like all in on open AI, so it's like, it, it just seems it's a weird time in the cloud game. Yeah, uh, you know, I think part of the, part of the AI approach, and we talked about this yesterday, it's a great opportunity for Google to take advantage of. Google has so much of the data necessary to train the models, to initiate the models. Now adding, you know, this garden of models right there. Uh, and then the user and developer productivity. Uh, one theme has been trying to do uh, more with less, and we hear about that a lot. Like, hey, let the AI help you do more with less. We're in a time where we're downsizing, we're cutting. Um, I, I think I'm actually looking forward to doing more with more. For those things that work well, yeah, yeah. why do more with less? If that's working well, and you can multiply the productivity of, of those people with that, then put more, put more people with more you know, bots helping get that work yeah. done. Yeah, I, I think again, it, it's, I, I, I felt a little differently on, on the demos. I thought the demos were, to your point, having been on a stage similar to that, those are really hard to do live. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that they were flying without a net, I, I give them a lot of credit. I think, you know, there's only a couple little hiccups, but I think they were showing how to use the AI in interesting ways. And I think that to yeah. me, and simply. Better than vaporware. Yeah, yes. well, I'll tell you what. Here's what I really want to see, and it'll probably be next year before we're able to answer this question. So the idea that, you know, the, these code assistants, co-pilots, Duet, uh, Cody, can generate a working demo is awesome. And as a, you know, former engineer, now product manager, the idea of, of taking some basic requirements and like spitting out a, a prototype, a proof of concept, that I get. What I don't yet get is, is that going to write the production code that builds the next Google search engine, that builds the next you know, expense report SaaS? Is it, can we take it all the way there? And I, I think we're going to need <laughs> six to 12 months of using it in yeah, anger. Yeah, we got we to check it out. That's a great point. I mean, hey, Duet, solve my technical debt problem. Yeah. Boom. Well, I yeah. think that's, that, that's the holy grail. That was right. the piece that was missing for me in the demos is they talk about legacy land and it's how do you get from legacy yeah. land to non-legacy land. Yeah. If they had taken some old code and put yeah. it in there and then redone it, yeah. to your point, using it in anger, yeah. uh, I think that to me is where this could be. Help me understand this code because there's so much legacy code that was written by people who are no longer with your company. Yeah. So well, I, played, I played with Bard uh, maybe six months ago with a partner. I've got some legacy code written in 1998 for dividing up the bills uh, when, when you, know, you go to a restaurant. We used it for roommate splitting. You know, this is ancient PHP and Postgres code. You missed Venmo, I thought. Uh, no, 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 this was, this was years before that. <laughs> but I thought about, you know, what, what, how, let, me, let me ask Bard uh, and Vertex AI to you know, port this forward. And like the, the little stuff it got right, it helped me you know, re-architect the database schema. Uh, but boy, getting into all of those yeah. nuances and corner cases that yeah. took years to, to get right, I found myself yeah. needling around in new code that was you know, working yeah. well enough. I think, that's, I think that's a great use case, and I think that's the one that's going to be the most exciting, is that you train the code as a language model. I mean, they yep. call it programming languages for yep. a reason. So if, they knows the, if it knows the code, <laughs> yeah. it should be able to engineer the code. Sure. So it's going to be very interesting to see. And then how do you train that? Right. What's good code? Right. And so you got to kind of play with that, and you brought that up yesterday, but I said, 
get the good code or the good data. You're yeah. Like, Actually, the bad data is, is good too. That's good too. That's what bad data is. Don't do that. <laughs> that's right. I mean, we, we saw we saw a bit about uh, security vulnerabilities in the scanning yeah. in the demo. I think that's another great use case of not don't do uh, don't don't you know it's more than just trying to do more with less. Do more with more. If this solves a set of security problems, pour gasoline on that fire and let it run. Yeah. yeah. And to, to our discussion yesterday, the fact that when they were showing those vulnerabilities and also going into GKE Enterprise and showing, hey, here's your security posture, your secure, sure. secure supply ch software supply chain and getting into some of that and what's in the containers. I thought right. that was pretty interesting stuff. I, I didn't get enough of, okay, where is that running? Like if it's, on, if it's a SaaS delivered management station, yep. what if I'm air gapped in where I'm running G GKE Enterprise or something like that? How does that run? I, there's still a lot of pieces that are missing yeah. that I didn't get out of the keynote, and there was nothing on data. Yeah. Once again, I, I'm, I'm, I was a little bit disappointed coming out of it that there, there's this whole gap between the infrastructure and the app, which is the data, yeah. and okay, they talked about how you can engineer, you can use the AI to go through and you know cycle through a Postgres database. Okay, well, that's great, but that, that really didn't get to how do you better use the data that is underlying the AI? How do I connect this all together? Because it's not all going to live in Google. Well, the good news there is we've had some fantastic guests uh, yeah. this week so far who you know come and talked about some of those yeah. third-party solutions yeah. around data, data pipelines, data streaming. Um, I can think of a, a couple just yeah. right off the top of my and head. And we got right. uh, we got security conversation coming on with Sunil Potty coming on, and Mandy is mentioned too. And they have their own event coming up. We'll be, right. The Cube will be there in mm -hmm. DC for the uh, Google Mandy and Security Conference, and we have the the heavy hitters on the infrastructure side coming yeah. on. Uh, uh, Sachin Gupta and Mark Lohmeyer from uh, Google Infrastructure, the new, the new TPUs are coming on. So, you know, they got a lot going on, right? They, they, we're going to keep analyzing. Uh, we'll wrap up at the end of the day today. We'll look at the stack and we'll identify where the gaps are we think they need to work on. But clearly, there's some things they got to they got to work on. I mean, obviously they're not 100% there, but it's looking good. Yeah. Looking yeah. good. So day two, keynote um, about developers. It really is about the use cases. Again, this is about the roadmap of Google. This is kind of where they're going. You can kind of see the 20 mile stair, if you will, of kind of what the direction is. You can see things filling in and use case demos are, are very helpful, but you know, they're putting it to work. They're not, they're not producing reference architectures. They're putting stuff out there uh, and they're building. So again, Google, thumbs up on, on keynote. Yeah, day one was smashing. I thought day two was uh, obviously hard to beat day one. But uh, guys, thanks for the analysis. All right, day two continues as we roll into the afternoon of theCUBE here in Moscone for Google Cloud Next. This is theCUBE, stay with us for more coverage after this short break.